Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBase.net. So it was Christmas a few days ago and it's the start of a new year. Some of you may have just received a new bass guitar as a gift and some of you will be looking to start playing very soon. So in this video, I'm going to break down the top 10 things that you need to, uh, to know when getting started with bass and I'll whip through them pretty quick, so hold on to your hats. So, first of all, you need a bass. Now, if you already have a bass, then that's fine. If not, and you're looking to buy one, for my first tip, don't worry about spending loads of money on one. Any bass will do within reason. Now, you obviously don't want some awful smashed up piece of garbage that you just found in a pit down by the canal, but any new bass is gonna be okay for a beginner. Given the choice and enough money, I'd recommend going for either a Fender Precision or a Fender Jazz Bass. They're the standard by which we judge pretty much every other bass, and both the Mexican and American made Fenders are both great. You'll pay less for the Mexican Fenders, but, you know, I think they're absolutely fine. Then, if you want a bit of a cheaper alternative, take a look at the Squire Vintage Modified range. They're a little cheaper than the Mexican made Fenders, but they're absolutely amazing value for money. Next, you need to get yourself an amp. Now again, for a beginner, any amp will do, but for my big tip, I would say definitely look to get something a little larger than those tiny 10 or 15 watt practice amps. They're really, really small speakers on them and they can start to distort and fart when you turn them up. And you know, you're never going to get a nice deep round tone with them. Now, I'm a big fan of Fender Rumble amps. They're great value for money, they're light, they're cheap, and they pack a great punch. And I would say the Fender Rumble 40 is probably the perfect practice amp for a beginner. 40 watts and have a really nice round bass tone. Obviously, you could look at getting something more powerful, 100, 200 watts, or even more. But for an absolute beginner, there's no point in going for that, and something like that Fender Rumble 40 will be perfect for practicing at home and also small band rehearsals. So, you've bought a bass, you've bought an amp, and the next step is learning to hold the bass. And for this, for my third tip, I would say make sure you've bought a strap. Now, any strap will do, but for a bass, you really want to be looking for a strap as wide as you can get. I use leather Minotaur straps that are four and a half inches wide, and that's about as wide as you're gonna find. And that's really good for spreading the weight across your shoulder. So if you stood there with it, you know, for ages every night, you know, you're not gonna get a lot of pain in the shoulder. Now, you obviously don't have to worry about finding a strap that wide and, you know, made of leather. The leather's just an added luxury. But you just have to get a strap, you know, learn to attach it to the base and then for some added security, you know, to stop it falling on the, on the floor and breaking your foot, just grab some strap locks or for a cheaper alternative, you can use these Grolsch bottle washers. And I do a complete video on those, so just check out the info below for the link. Now, you'll obviously be seated for a lot of your practice, in which case you can place the bass on either your left leg or your right leg. But when you stand, just make sure that you've set your strap height so that the bass is at the same height when you're seated or when you stood. Okay? Simple. Tips four and five both deal with the actual playing of the bass. So for tip number four, you want to learn how to pick the strings on the bass. This is how we make a sound out of the instrument. So first, decide on whether you're going to use your fingers or a pick. Both are fine, and you know, don't get caught up in all of that fingers versus pick rubbish. They're both legit ways of playing and just give different tones. So at the end of the day, you know, it's worth learning both. Now, on the first day of playing, you might not have a pick to play with, so fingers are always going to be the more accessible way of getting started. So, for this tip, let's quickly look at how we can pick the strings, and we're going to look at a basic anchoring technique. Now, this is where we anchor the thumb of the picking hand on the pickup or a string, okay? So, let's have a look at the basics of this. So, we're just going to pick the lowest string there, the E, so this is the thickest string on the bass, and um, we're just gonna take the thumb of the picking hand, so this is my right hand, and I'm just gonna plunk it there on the pickup, okay? So I'm just placing it there on that middle pickup. So whichever pickup you wanna use, and then you want to place the finger, the index finger there, just place that on the string. So this is the starting position. So we've got the thumb anchored on the pickup, and the finger is resting on the string, and then all we have to do is just simply bring the finger into the thumb, so it's this action, okay? So, and we get a note, okay? So, and then when you want to cut that note off, you can simply put the finger back on the string. So, so, pick and 
rest, okay? So this technique is called rest stroke because we're picking the note and we're coming to rest on the finger, on the thumb, sorry. So there we are, the basics of finger picking. So that's the basics of finger picking. You can pick with one finger, that index finger, or you can bring that second finger, the middle finger, into play if you need to uh, play a little quicker. So with one finger, two fingers, but either way, we're still bringing the fingers into that thumb. Now, if you want to play on the other strings, so A string, D string, or G string, we can do the same thing. Just keep that thumb there anchored on that pickup, and then just pick again. So there I'm picking on that A string. So that's the next string. And this time, the finger comes to rest on the next string. So instead of coming back to rest on the thumb, it comes to rest on the string. There's the D string and the G string, okay? Over time, as you develop your picking technique, you'll learn to shift the thumb across on each string as you move across the strings. So if you're playing stuff like scales, you know, you'll learn to bring that thumb across. But for now, just get used to the basic finger picking action and don't worry about getting too technical. For tip number five, you need to learn how to use the left hand in fretting a note. This is how we select which notes we're going to play, and it's worth getting used to a good technical foundation right from the start. So, first of all, you want to take the thumb of this fretting hand, the left hand, and you want to place it in the back of the neck. Now, the best place to put that thumb is halfway between this edge and this edge, so it's right there in the middle, okay? And then we can just bring the fingers down to fret a note. So, we're pretty much going to be holding the hand in this kind of position, as if you're holding a ball. So you put the thumb in and then bring the fingers down. You can then curl them a little, hold down a note, and pick it, okay? So there I'm holding down the third fret, the G there on that E string, okay? So I've got the thumb there in the back, and I'm just pushing that finger down, okay? And that's it. Now, when you hold the string down for the note, you want to place the finger just behind the fret that you're aiming for. So, if we're looking to play the third fret of that E string, you know, the thickest string, count up through the frets, so we've got one, two, three, and you want to be just behind it. So, there's all this wood between that second fret and the uh, third fret. We want to be just behind that third fret. We don't want to be on top of the fret, because it'll all rattle and it'll sound horrible. So, just behind it, hold it down, and there's your note. For tip number six, we need to quickly look at how to get a sound from the bass in terms of the bass and amp tone controls. Now, first of all, we need to look at the bass controls, you know, the controls on the actual instrument, uh, so we've got a good sound at source. And to do this, you need to know your way around the knobs on the bass, and you also need to know whether it's passive or active. Passive basses have a simple volume and tone control for each pickup. So, on a precision bass that has only one pickup, we've got a volume and tone control. And on a regular jazz bass like this, we've got two, two pickups, so we've got a volume and tone for each one. So, that will be four knobs. In terms of settings for a passive bass, just turn that volume and tone control up full. So, just grab that knob and just turn it clockwise, you know, as far as it'll go. That's all you need to do for a passive bass. Active basses have a battery, which allows for more tone shaping controls. So first of all, you want to find out what knobs you have available on there, what tone controls. And, uh, you know, you can do that by either looking at maybe a leaflet that you've got with the actual bass, or you can look it up online. Either way, you want to turn the volumes up full on there, and you want to then take the bass, mid, or treble controls, and then just set them flat. So that would, on an amp, it would usually mean 12 o'clock, but what you want to do is set it halfway between, you know, completely off and full clockwise rotation. So you want to just take it halfway, and you'll usually find a little indentation about halfway around, and that's where you want to set it. So for a passive bass, turn everything up full, and on an active bass, just turn the volume up full, and then just set all the tone controls halfway. By setting everything this way on the bass, you'll have a good middle ground for getting started, and it's a, a pretty good representation of the acoustic sound of the instrument. So next for the amp, my big tip is to just set everything flat. So that means taking the tone controls, so that could be bass, middle, or treble, and you just put them all to 12 o'clock, okay? So we just want them flat, so we're not colouring it in any way. We're not cutting back on anything, and we're not boosting anything. It's just flat. You can always change it all afterwards, but to begin with, just get everything flat so you know the ba you have a basic foundation. Then all you have to do is take the volume, 
and then you just start turning it up until you get to the right volume uh, for the room. So we've set our base first of all, and then we can set the amp. Next, we have tip number seven, learn to tune your bass. Now, learning to tune an instrument can be pretty tricky when you're first getting started, but it is an absolutely essential thing that you need to do before starting to play because if you don't, everything's going to be out of tune. So my advice would be to get an electric tuner right from the start. You know, you can get pedals by companies like Boss or Korg or TC Electronic, but it's probably easier to just get one on your app, uh, sorry, on your phone as an app. So there's different apps like uh, ClearTune or Tuner Pro, but Fender do a great tuner app that listens to your bass using the microphone, and then it guides you through the process by telling you whether you need to go up or down with each string. And then you'll get a nice graphic telling you when you're bang on. One thing I would say with the Fender app is be sure to set it to bass guitar. If you set it as a normal guitar, when you try doing the automated tuning, it might think that you're using different strings. So you can just set it in there, just set it to bass guitar and then set it to auto. And then when you uh, play one of the open strings, it'll know which one you're playing and it'll just tell you whether to tune it up or down. Next, for tip number eight, we have the most important tip for learning the instrument and developing your overall playing ability. Learn songs. Learn as many songs as you can. Start with simple riff-based tunes and just play along to them, you know, on CDs, MP3s, Spotify, or whatever format you listen to. Don't worry about learning a ton of scales or arpeggios to begin with. That'll all come with time. The most important thing to start with is just, you know, having fun and playing music. By playing along to songs that, um, that you like, you'll develop every aspect of your playing ability and learn to play in time with other instruments. Now, tip number nine is a really contentious one that I'll probably get a lot of hate for from, you know, the music and bass teachers, but here it is anyway. So I'd say learn how to read tablature, or tab for short. You don't have to learn how to read uh, sheet music right away, even though it is obviously preferable. Just learn how tab works so that you can start to learn fingering patterns, you know, and, you know, different songs from magazines and online sources. Now, if you've never seen tab before, it's simply a set of four horizontal lines representing the strings on the bass. And then we can write numbers on each of those uh, lines or strings to indicate which frets to play. So if we see the number three on the bottom line, that's the third fret on that E string. The number 10 on the third line from the bottom would be the 10th fret up here on the D string. So this allows us to write down very simple notation for learning everything from songs to scales and everything in between. So if we take a look at this tab on the screen, we have a list of notes to play. And if I work through them one at a time, we get the following. So we've got the third fret and then the fifth fret on the A string. So that's the second line from the bottom. So third fret and then fifth fret. Then we move on to the next string and we have the second fret, the third fret and the fifth fret. And then we move on to the next string and we have the second fret, the fourth fret and the fifth fret. So play each one of those in turn. Okay, and that's a C major scale. So by using tab, it was very easy to just show you a C major scale without having to stand here saying, okay, well, we play that third fret on that A string and then we play that fifth fret. I can just show you. I don't have to verbalize it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, tab is notorious for causing arguments amongst music teachers. Most music teachers would advise against learning tab and hate the very thought of it. There's no rhythmic notation, there's no dynamics, it's just numbers and, you know, it's just seen as being very anti-notes. You don't learn the notes on your neck and you don't learn anything about rhythm. It's, you know, just anti-academic music, let's say. However, even though I'm actually one of those teachers that stresses the importance of learning to read standard notation, and I even have my own massive in-depth course devoted to sight reading, I still think there's a place for tab. And for beginners, it's a fantastic way of just getting started, you know, getting straight into playing. Most beginner bass players take up the instrument simply for the fun of it and aren't really bothered about jumping into the more academic aspects of music. For some bass players, you know, the thought of dedicated academic study is just a huge turnoff. And for that reason, I think tab has its place. And it can even help with getting you started with ear training because there are actual limitations with tab. You know, there's no rhythm there. 
You can't really learn a song just from tab alone. And because of that, you have to listen to the original song. You can look at the tab, you know, you learn that maybe it's, you know, whatever the notes are, you get them there under your fingers and you have to listen out for them in the actual music. So it forces you into actually learning the piece semi by ear, okay? So again, tab, you have to know its limitations, you know, don't go thinking that tab is, you know, the be all and end all of learning to read music. You know, it has very large problems, you know, and limitations. But for getting started and then just getting started with learning songs, it's fine. So finally, for tip number 10, just practice, practice, practice and have fun. Bass guitar is a great instrument and playing bass in a band is such a cool thing to do, but the more effort that you put into your practice, the more enjoyment you'll actually get out of it. Most musicians that have achieved any level of success on the instrument are pretty much obsessed with practice. But to become obsessed with practice, you need to love the instrument and love playing it. But this love affair is only going to develop through enjoyment and success. You want lots of small victories. Lots of those moments where you feel a sense of achievement at learning something new. So don't worry about playing the long game. Don't, you know, try to be too academic at first. Just get the basics down and play, you know, learn songs and just learn to love that feeling of playing the music, playing a groove, locking in with that drum beat. That's why we all pick up the instruments in the first place. And you just want to use that passion as fuel in eventually diversifying your practice and taking your playing to the next level. So if you want to learn bass, take a deeper dive into all 10 of those points and also continue developing to be the best bass player that you can be, come on over to TalkingBass.net and check out all of the resources on offer. You can sign up for the free membership and gain access to all of the ebook downloads and all of those other free goodies. You can use the free lessons on the lesson map where you'll find hundreds more lessons, you know, on every aspect of bass playing from beginner to advanced level. And then if you really want to take your bass playing further, check out the Talking Bass courses. We have a starter pack for absolute beginners and then you can move on to other skills like reading, slap technique, ear training, walking bass, you know, theory, all of that stuff. So just click the link in the info below and I'll see you next week.